Hello, today I'm making mint jelly with pectin from green apples. I'm using about four pounds of very big green Granny Smith apples from my parents' tree and a bunch of mint. We don't peel or core the apples. We just cut them up, cores and everything, because most of the pectin is in the core and a lot of flavor is in the peel. I've stripped the mint leaves off of their stems and chopped them until, I've had, until I have about a cup and a half loosely packed chopped mint leaves. I put the chopped green apples and mint into a large pot. I'm adding two cups of water. I'm going to bring that to a boil and let it simmer for 20 minutes. The apples have been cooking for about 20 minutes. They're all nice and soft. I'm going to add two cups of white vinegar. Bring that to a boil and let that cook for another five minutes. The apples and the vinegar have been cooking for about five minutes. Now, now I'm going to mash them until they're the consistency of applesauce. The mash looks a little thick, so I'm going to add about half a cup more water to it to make it just thinner. To strain the mash, I'm going to put a fine mesh sieve over a big pot. Then I'm going to put a piece of dampened cheesecloth over the fine mesh sieve. If you have a fine mesh sieve, the cheesecloth isn't necessary, but using the cheesecloth may make the jelly just a little bit more clear, so I'm using it. You can also use a jelly bag for this step. Now I'm going to ladle the mash into the cheesecloth lined sieve. All the mash is now in the cheesecloth lined sieve. It's straining and we're going to let gravity do its work for a couple of hours. It's several hours later and the mash has been straining for hours. And we have what looks like several cups of juice. Before I start the, cooking the last stage of the jelly, I'm going to sterilize jars in the oven. 10 minutes, 200 degrees. I've also poured boiling hot water over a bunch of jar lids. Finally, I'm placing a plain white plate in my freezer. I'll explain why in a bit. I'll need 7 eighths of a cup of sugar for every cup of juice. I have three and a half cups of juice, so I'll need just a shade over three cups of sugar. I place the juice and the sugar in a wide, shallow pot. This is about an eight quart pot. With the heat on high, I'm going to stir so all of the sugar gets dissolved in the juice. I use a wide shallow pan because it has more surface area. That means that the jelly will come to a boil faster. Once the jelly comes to a boil, you'll see scum developing on the surface. If you want, you can skim off that foam with a metal spoon. There's nothing really wrong with the foam. You can eat it, it tastes fine. It's just that it may cloud up your jelly a little bit if you want a clean, clear jelly. Lower the heat to medium and boil the jelly for about 10 minutes or so. Use a candy thermometer or your favorite instant read thermometer, this is mine, to test the temperature of the jelly. When the jelly reads around 218 degrees, then you can start testing it on that cold plate that you put in the freezer. The jelly should wrinkle when it's ready. This one's not wrinkling at all, so it's not yet ready. Now it's beginning to wrinkle. Can you see that? That means it's ready to pour out. Pour the jelly into the sterilized jars, leaving about a quarter inch headspace from the top. Okay, this batch has yielded me almost four eight ounce jars. One's a little bit short, but that's okay. Place the lids on the jars and secure with canning rings. Now I'm just going to wait for the jar lids to pop. That way I know a vacuum has been created with a cooling jelly and that um, the jars have sealed properly. If any of the jars don't seal properly, you can store them in the refrigerator. Otherwise, you can try processing them in a water bath. So that's it, mint jelly. Three ingredients only, green apples, mint, and sugar. I hope you've enjoyed my little tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know.